Hi designers, welcome to SolidWorks Central. In this tutorial, we'll create a realistic chain style ring step by step. We'll use essential tools like extruded boss base, fillet, extruded cut, axis, circular pattern, linear pattern, flex, and combine to build the model, then finish it with appearances for a professional look. This exercise is perfect for improving your 3D modeling skills and workflow. Ready? Let's jump right in and start modeling. First, open a sketch on the front plane. Next, choose the polygon tool. Draw a hexagon with its center placed at the origin. Align the top edge of the hexagon horizontally. Select the Smart Dimension tool. Set the inscribed circle diameter of the hexagon to 10 millimeters. Continue with the Offset Entities tool. Set the offset distance to 2.3 millimeters. Now, select one edge of the hexagon. With Select Chain enabled, all the edges of the hexagon are selected automatically. Reverse the offset direction by checking the reverse box. Click OK. From the Features tab, select the Extruded Boss Base command. In the End Condition option, change Blind to Mid Plane. Set the depth value to 2 mm. Click OK. Open a new sketch on the front plane. Select the centerline tool. Draw a vertical centerline starting from the origin. From the search commands bar, select the dynamic mirror entities tool. Set the centerline as the mirror axis for dynamic mirror entities. Select the line tool. Dynamic Mirror Entities lets us sketch symmetrically across a center line in real time. Hold down the control key and select both lines, then make them parallel. We can exit the sketch now. Select the Fillet command. Set the fillet radius to 1 mm. Select one corner edge of the hexagon. From the shortcut menu, choose Connected to Start Loop so all five edges are selected automatically. Click OK. Select the Extruded Cut command. From our sketch, select the closed contour we want to cut. Reverse the cut direction. Change the From option from Sketch Plane to Offset. Enter 0.125mm for the offset value. Press OK. Click Show to make the sketch visible. Open the Extruded Cut command again and apply the same cut to the other closed contour. From Reference Geometry, select the Axis command. Create an axis through the center point of the hexagon, normal to the front plane, using the Point and Face Plane option. Click OK. To hide the sketch again, click on any line of the sketch and choose Hide. Select the Fillet command. Set the fillet radius to 0.5 mm. Apply the fillet to the inner edges created by the cut. Press OK. From the Linear Pattern drop-down, select the Circular Pattern command. For the direction, select the axis we created. The pattern will be circular around this axis. 
In Features to Pattern, select the features we want to duplicate. Keep the number of instances set to 2. The angle controls the spread of the pattern. We'll keep it at 360 degrees. Click OK. We're done with the axis, so we can hide it by clicking Hide. Open the Fillet command again. Keep the fillet radius at 0.5 mm. Select the edge we want to fillet. From the shortcut menu, choose All Concave so all five connected concave edges are selected automatically. Press OK. Open the fillet command again. This time, set the fillet radius to 0.35 millimeters. Apply the fillet to the edges. Click OK. Yes, another fillet. Let's open the fillet command again because who doesn't love smooth edges? This time, apply the fillet to the faces. Click OK. Select the linear pattern command. For direction one, select this edge as the reference. Click on the arrow to flip the direction of the pattern. Set the number of instances to 7, which means we'll have 7 copies in total. Enter 6 millimeters for the spacing value. This sets the distance between each copy. Under Bodies, choose the body we want to pattern. Press OK. Start a new sketch on the front plane. Select the centerline tool and assign dynamic mirror entities to this centerline again, since we'll use it for mirroring once more. Select the center rectangle or the corner rectangle tool. Switch to the Sketch Fillet tool and set the fillet radius to 2 mm. Apply the Sketch Fillet to the corners. Click OK. Add a midpoint relation between this edge and the origin, the center of our model. Select the Smart Dimension tool. Set the horizontal length of the rectangle to 30 mm. Set the vertical length of the rectangle to 10 mm. I kept the chain and the frame flush at 10 mm, but if you want the frame a bit higher, you can make it 10.5 mm. Open the extruded boss base command to give the sketch some depth. Keep the end condition set to mid plane. Change the depth value to 2.75 mm. Click OK. From the Search Commands bar, open the Flex command. The Flex command lets us bend, twist, taper or stretch a solid body. Flex input defines the bodies to which the flex will be applied. Here, we'll select all of the bodies we created. Scroll down a bit. In the Triad section, set X rotation angle to 0 degrees Y rotation angle to 90 degrees and Z rotation angle to 90 degrees. In the bending parameters, set the angle to 150 degrees first, just to see how the model reacts. Now, increase the angle to 360 degrees to complete the ring shape. Press OK. As we can see, the ring has two separate bodies after the flex. Let's combine them into a single solid from the Direct Editing tab, open the Combine command, or 
We can also access the combine command from the search bar. Select the bodies we want to combine. Click OK. All right, let's open the fillet command one last time. I promise, this is the final one. Keep the same fillet radius and apply it by selecting both the inner and outer faces of the combined body. Right-click to confirm the command and exit. Our model is complete. Now, to make it look more realistic and appealing, let's apply appearances to the body and the outer faces of the chains and set up a scene. We'll also make a few small adjustments to enhance the final look. I'll apply a gold appearance to the frame and add a platinum appearance to the chain surfaces. Of course, you can customize it as you like. Now, let's switch to a different scene to improve the final look. Before moving on, let's fix the frame height to 10.5 mm for a better look. Go back to the feature where we set the depth, choose Edit Sketch and make the correction. Yes, now it looks much better. Let's continue with the final touches. Adjust the environment rotation to change how the light and reflections fall on our model. And that's how we've completed our chain ring model in SOLIDWORKS. I hope you enjoyed it. If you found this tutorial helpful, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to SOLIDWORKS Central for more tutorials. For new video ideas or any questions, feel free to drop a comment below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.